Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando, that's Corey, and today we're doing 2018's The Equalizer. Two. Yeah, judo chop. I don't know. That's all did I you got. freeze? I'm like, I did. <laughs> it was a lot of times if you see me and I'm just, I'm stuck in one of these, I'm actually thinking of something to get out of this position. And then I just don't come up with something, so I just stay there. <laughs> you kind of look like you were having a non-flashback. I was pretty worried about you. Oh, I started to have a stroke. We could talk about that in part three, but Denzel's uh, lip in part three literally looks like he's stroking out for half the movie because that shit's just leaning down like this. I was like, is he literally having a stroke on camera and they kept it? That was the same side he got shot in in that movie. It was all nerve damage. Okay. Cool. Oops. Spoiler alert. Before we get started, if you would like to follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, etc., you can follow us at Kiss the Reviews. And uh, let's get into and actually before we get into. Um, the the cast of the For equalizer the love too. of christ sorry guy i got to announce a few things because it might be a little weird for people on youtube when they're going through this review and there's like no clips and it's just us and there's quick cuts and a lot of that stuff there's a reason for that all the cool shit is on patreon now <laughs> so If you uh, if you want to follow us on Patreon, you can follow us on Patreon. That's also Kiss the Reviews as well. Um, and give us your money. Now, let's get to the cast of The, the Equalizer 2. I equalize more shit. Mm. This film stars Denzel Washington as Robert McCall, Pedro Pascal as Dave York, Ashton Sanders as Miles Whitaker, and Melissa Leo as Susan Palmer. Her death is fucking brutal. Her death is brutal. Um, I, I don't really care much in movies when like a main character or like this like secondary character dies. Like I I'm I'm all there for it, typically. Um when I saw her just get the snot beat out of her. I was like, Jesus Christ. And then at the end, when they cut and they show you like what actually mm -hmm. happened to her afterwards, it's like, ah, come on. Like, yeah, I, I didn't they, want, I, I just didn't want uh, Melissa Leo to, to go out like that. That was kind of sad. Yeah. Kill Bill Pullman instead. And I love Bill Pullman. Me but, too. Dude, that was just, that was a brutal scene. That was rough. She fought yeah. like a boss. Sort of. We'll get to it. Yeah, no, we'll we'll get to it because I got one question about the whole scene. But this movie opens with McCall on a train. He's saving a girl who's kidnapped by her dad, and he gets her back to her mother who owns this bookstore in Boston that he goes to. And it immediately cuts to dollar store Mark Wahlberg in Belgium, like killing a husband and wife and we don't really know what's going on. It's it's a lot. Like, they're on the train, and he does the... By the way, the train scene is in the bar car. Mm -hmm. Is fantastic. And we talk about... We've talked about, when we did the first Equalizer, about, like, this is what a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie could be. If it mm -hmm. had good, good actors and, and better dialogue and, you know, yada, yada. And even... I don't even think so. Even if you gave the Van Damme movies, the the fights in Van Damme movies, it's like, ooh, karate and haya and all this stuff, right? And that's what you, you're there to see. Dude, you can keep the Kia. These creative kills mm -hmm. with household objects. And again, I know we touched on it briefly in the first one. It's... In, in close quarters and like I'm there for all of that. You can keep all the judo chops you want. 
Yeah, no, what what I think you touched on it too. What helps make this so much more fun and even believable is the fact that <clears throat> the choreography involved in these fights are so smooth. So many times in the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, like a guy will punch you and then he'll wait for you to hit him back. Yeah. Nobody's fucking doing that. <laughs> even if they're not supposed to be doing that in the fight, yep. it's still choreographed that way or it's edited that way so it looks just false and fake as shit. Yeah. Whereas this is so smooth. The transitions are so fast. It's just, it seems seamless. Yeah. And it again, it makes it seem so real. And I'm telling you right now, as a guy that's tried to stop many of bad guys on trains, it's not real. I got my ass kicked mm -hmm. every single time. And it hasn't you know, taken four of them. You know what else is not real? The fact that okay, we I I can I can write it off that McCall had two apartments in part one, right? Mm -hmm. As as he was working at Home Depot, I can write it off. It was 2014. He probably got a great deal, right? I don't care what neighborhood you live in in Boston. The fact that he's a Lyft driver and has this big ass apartment uh, in 2018, I'm calling bullshit on this. Dude, Lyft was really big in Boston around 2018. That was jamming. So he was he was jamming on the one. He was making a fuckload of money as a Lyft driver. Yeah, like once that dried up, everybody went to OnlyFans. That's just how that worked. Speaking of which, you can see my feet on OnlyFans. <laughs> is it possible this story is true? We got here to Boston. McCall's driving a Lyft, of course. He picks up this girl who's obviously been sexually assaulted. And he goes up to the room where, you know, the rich dude bros are, you know, hanging out and talking about like motivational TikToks and shit. And he equalizes the fuck out of these guys, right? Side mission complete. And this is, I actually remember the beginning of this from the trailer. When mm -hmm. I saw the trailer, when he comes back up after he drops the, the girl off at, at the hospital or whatever, and he's talking to the dude, and he sees the black car, and he's like, oh, I've never seen one of these. And they do that scene in the trailer. I was like, yeah. yo, I got to see this. And yeah. this one is awesome, except it made my nuts tingle when he grabs the dude's fingers, and he hasn't done anything. He's just talking to him. He's making Everything her say the girl's name over and over again. Everything from my waist down was like, on pins and needles. <laughs> it's a beautiful scene. Yes. Uh, it's one of the most satisfying kills. A hundred percent. When in the first one, when he goes into the room, you know, and he's offering him the ninety eight hundred dollars to buy Chloe Moretz out of yeah the whole thing. That was satisfying. Simply. Not so much because they're running whores, because that's not really why he was there. Yeah. It was their cockiness that you kind of was like, fuck yeah. Like, shove it right in their ass, you sons of bitches. This yes. one, it was like the cockiness plus they're fucking pigs. And you saw firsthand yeah. what they did to this girl. Personally, not like a guy, not a couple thugs maybe off screen. Like, you saw what was going on with her. Yep. And dude, like it, it was so satisfying how he gets in there, <clears throat> cutting the dude's face with the card. Oh, yeah. Is amazing. Uh, when he, it looks like he breaks a dude's neck, but he does, like you could see the guy, like, yeah. he just really fucked up and like almost paralyzed for a little bit, which was so awesome. And then you're right, just the, him holding that other dude's hands. And call making him say Amy over and over again, and then requesting the five star review uh, for dude, his lift service. And then again, I, this is how you layer comedy. Yeah, I'm I'm not joking. Like this is how you layer comedy into your into your action movie. That was just mm -hmm. a little funny bit. You know what I mean? Not this like overt weird like JCVD 
comedy that they try to add. Yeah. But so he ends up here getting another side mission when this local gang tears up the the garden in his like in his community where where his apartment mm. is and they tag the building and this is where he meets Miles and he pays him to help him paint over like all the tagging and stuff right <laughs> and one of the tags is gang gang i fucking <laughs> fell out <laughs> I'm like, that's what you tagged was gang, 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 gang. <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys. Broaden your horizons. You're going to tag, do it right. You didn't even write your gang's name on there. Yeah. You just wrote gang, gang. Like, is that the name of your gang? Is gang, gang? We're the gang, gang, gang. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking jerk offs. Who are you? Gang, gang, gang. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Susan is actually in Boston here. She She's helping to investigate the murder of the dude in Belgium. And after Susan, Brian, and McCall have dinner, she flies out to Belgium to investigate this murder. And this is where she gets followed to her hotel by Neymar and Ronaldo. And then mm-hmm. they attack and kill her in her hotel room. And rewinding a scene real quick, when <laughs> they all meet up for dinner, and Bill Pullman's just written his book. And he walks out and is like, dude, that was embarrassing. There was like two people there. I have literally <laughs> never empathized with the character so much in my life. I was like, bro, I feel you. That fucking sucks. It does suck. I was working security at that gig. I, I, I didn't have to secure anybody. I just got drunk. Yeah, both of them <laughs> were in and out. You were right. McCall here is watching Miles paint the the bricks and everything and over the tagging. And he gets a call from Brian to let him know that Susan's been murdered. So it's time to equalize. So McCall flies to D.C. for the funeral and starts investigating into Susan's death. And we then cut, quick cut to Neymar and Ronaldo. They're in their apartment. They get fucked up with this explosive because they answer a random cell phone that's ringing while they're tweaking balls in their apartment. That was the one thing I didn't understand. Like you're taking out a CIA operative, Mm -hmm. whether it's female, male, whether she's a desk clerk or, you know what I mean? Like not actual, like McCall, like a wet work operative. Right. Doesn't matter. Like this needs to be done correctly. And you are not hiring two fucking tweakers to be able to get the jump on her. I don't care if they are that big. It's not happening. Ever. That was my what literal one beef with this entire movie was these guys, them tweaking out. I didn't know who they were. Because it no, didn't make sense. No, I didn't know who they were because they were like all in like soccer gear yeah, in the elevator. You know, clean they, and their was hair gonna... was did and they yeah. looked appropriate like human they, beings. And now they're just like junkies looking like bubbles and shit. It's they like, immediately what are you doing? Went, they immediately went home and they were like, oh, thank God we're done killing that stupid old lady. Now time to mess up my hair and tweak out on drugs. Like, I don't know. Like, you're right. When I saw them, I'm like, who the fuck are these guys? Yeah, it was so (laughs) so bizarre. It took me a second to put it together. And my favorite part is when the apartment explodes and they, you know, they they pan out. Mm -hmm. And then you see fucking DJ Khaled over here. Like, all right, apartment exploded. And then he gets into the car. I'm like, that's not how things work. That shit's done. And they're fucking, they're down the road. Yeah, and I got to do this because you brought up DJ Khaled, not me. (laughs) Corey's Life Lessons. Uh, uh, Hi, filmmakers. Uncle Corey here. So you're looking to hire some toughs to play your bad guys. Expendable bad guys. Totally cool. You need them. You have to have them. Literally, Equalizer 1, 2, and 3 has a dude that's about six foot six with a bald head and a giant fucking beard. 
I didn't know if it was the same guy from the first one. <laughs> Diversify your crew. You have got to stop this bullshit. This archetype bad guy, like, stop. It's obscene. You are correct. What you want me to believe is Pedro Pascal in this movie leading these guys is the main tough guy. That guy with the fucking beard and the ju he's the boss of everything all the time. I don't know yes. if you know how gangs work. He's the boss. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, a just clean, stop hiring a, that guy, dude. A clean shaven Pedro Pascal is not the leader of this gang. No. Of CIA operatives. No, not with fucking Rolo the fucking Viking standing behind him. Like, unless that guy is fucking Lenny from Of Mice and Men, he should not be the uh, uh, a subject to anyone. So McCall here then goes to see Dave, his former partner. He thought McCall was dead, but now he's alive and he faked his death. And they both believe that Susan's death was connected to this Belgian murder deal. Mm -hmm. So McCall then sees Miles cut to, you know, back to the apartment and he sees Miles with two local gangsters side mission is a go here right he equalizes the fuck out of the guards he gets to miles he gets him out of there and then he gets mad close like nose to nose to teach him some fucking life life lessons and then he gives the motherfucker homework listen yeah he does he goes full fucking furious styles on this dude uh, and it's amazing <laughs> absolutely I got a real quick thing for y'all. Don't do that, it's not good for ya. Hi, do-gooders and equalizers of the world. You have ju you just got done equalizing some bitches, right? You saved this dude that you're trying to save because you don't want him turned into the drug game. And yeah, yeah, I get all that. Cool, good job, good on ya. You're looking out for the community and things. Um, after you make him poop his pants by holding a gun to his head, and then holding that gun to your head? Don't then give him homework like you should read this book because stuff and things, and it'll teach you stuff, and you should be more well-read. Don't do that. Don't give the guy homework. He's got a load of crap in his pants right now. Don't have him read a book. That's all I'm saying. I totally disagree, and this is why I think all teachers should have guns because the <laughs> only way you can get me to get my homework done is to do some crazy ass shit like that and to be like, now go home and read, punk bitch. I'd be like, okay, you got it, boss. I am on my way home to read. Nah, I'm splitting fingers. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not down with any of that. But McCall then gets suspicious of this passenger in his lift. He equalizes that dude's face while he drives. Amazing. And the, pass and the passenger's trying to stab him. And this is what I'm talking about, about these close quarters type moves and, mm -hmm. and the core, how smooth, like you were saying, the choreography is in these situations. Dude, this whole fight back and forth. And we've seen them a million times in action movies. The fight in the car, mm -hmm. on top of the car, whatever. This one by far, like I can't think of one off the top of my head that I'm like, this one's the number one scene like that. But this one has got to be at least in the top two. Oh, yeah. Well, it's inventive. You get to see how McCall is as a character beforehand because yeah. he's IDing the guy. He knows, like, he does, he tells him, you know, like, you must not fly a lot. Like, we've been going the wrong way. We're not going towards Boston Logan. Yeah. It's just the whole, the whole setup shows how intelligent he is. How he's already weary that somebody's probably watching him. And then taking it to that next step of using his car as a weapon. And not yeah. in a traditional way where you're running somebody over, but making a left-hand turn so the guy flies and bangs his head into the door. Yeah, And then turning it the other way so his knife is coming closer to you and you can grab him. The whole thing is just brilliantly executed. From Absolutely. even just like writing it down to the storyboarding of it to the choreography of it, every part of this is a great fight scene, and it's so. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. And like, you see these lists 
on YouTube and everywhere else talking about like greatest fight scenes. It's short, but it's a really good scene just because it's so inventive. What are you going to yeah. do? Show me another hallway fight scene? Thanks, Daredevil. <laughs> Seen it. Next. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The um, because and after this, he lights the whole car on fire. He's got the dude's body in there. Yaks his phone. He's looking at it. He finds code on the phone, and he McCall then goes to Dave, shows him the information on the phone, traces the source back to Dave's phone. Dave gives some exposition here as to why he's doing what he's doing and the fact that he killed Susan. And then this, again, another, it's just like, oh, this is my favorite scene. And then I see this one, I'm like, oh, no, this one's my favorite scene. Where Dave and him go outside mm-hmm. to his his gang of toughs, t- tough I, CIA operatives. I think it's really dope that they all carpool to work, by the way. I do. I do like that. I appreciate that. Good appreciate for you guys. That. But this whole thing where, like, they're trying to be, like, these bully, tough guy yada yada and then the wife comes out Mm -hmm. and mccall's like oh yeah dave told me you're gonna give me a ride over there and then he's like holding his daughter as he's like walking away and he's like "Ah." (laughs) Like, it's It's so so good good. it's so good and there are so many little bits and i don't mean this in a negative way but he brought so many bits of his character's cockiness from training day yeah. Over to playing McCall. Yeah. That it's so good. Like, and I mean, it's not that same character by any stretch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's, he's just got this little air every now and again of like, yeah. ah, like you said, fuck you. Like, I, I can best you or beat you anytime yes. I want to. Yep. That, no, you're, you're absolutely right. It's that. Cause in the first one, it's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do this. I've mm-hmm. faked my death. I'm retired. I don't. Right. And then they pull me back in. So by two and three, he has this like, yeah, I know I'm the fucking man and watch me show it to you right now. And he's just stunting on dudes like, oh yeah. All right, and dude. now you actually killed his friend. So now he does want to do this. Yes. No matter what happened, even if he had never had the first movie, this happening is why he's just like, okay, motherfuckers, like I chess and checkers, like he said in training day, chess and checkers. So McCall here takes Brian away to a safe house until he sorts the situation out, knowing that, you know, the boys are coming for him, right? And oh my God, dude. And Bill Pullman, I'm sorry to keep interrupting you. Bill Pullman does such a good job playing this husband who has just lost his wife yeah. to a fucking murder. Well, just like him trying, like, talking about the clothes for a funeral yeah. and all this shit, dude. He looks devastated. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like, and I wasn't going to bring it up, but he did do a good job. And now that you brought that up, the one thing I didn't like was they were all in the CIA. Were they not? I don't think he was. Okay. I, I I don't know what he did, but like he seemed like even his wife's like, I'll get you the information and I'll get it for you here in a second. I'll be right back. She leaves for four seconds. She comes back on a goddamn helicopter landing Mm -hmm. in their backyard and is like, running up and here's your information and I stabbed this guy in the neck and yada yada but like he's just she's dead and she's like I I don't know what to do like I'm just like this helpless I'm like your wife was a goddamn assassin she was a menace and you're just like this dude who wrote a horrible book like that that's you describes a couple of my marriages (laughs) but I mean yeah that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, yeah, like even the book he writes, it's not like, you know, how I killed bin Laden. It's like the macroeconomical effects of a biodegradable quantum physical wormhole. It's like, dude, what the fuck are you even writing about? Hell yes. I like him so much. I didn't say this in the first, but I do like that they set him up to be a little cuckish. Like he's not yeah. this tough guy. He doesn't join forces like he's just a dude. Yeah. 
And his wife just happened to be this incredibly powerful person. Dave and uh, DJ Khaled break into McCall's apartment and Miles is in there and he's painting and he's on the phone with McCall and McCall's like, hey, go pull this book, push this button, go in the thing, little panic room kind of deal. I can't wait to show you mine when you come here, dude. My panic room (laughs) is the shit. It's so rad. Dude, after I saw this, and if you remember in the first uh, review of Equalizer, Mm -hmm. I said, this is what your husbands are doing. I was watching this scene going, huh. So bookshelf with a button. So it's got to have a latch. So I could just like, but like measure out and build a book. Bu- like I'm already in my head trying to build a panic room in my house. Mm-hmm. I can show you how it's super easy. <laughs> Dig it. I like it. I like it. But we, yeah, we get this whole thing here in miles, by the way, if, okay, I got to do it. Don't do that. It's not good for you. Hi people. Just everybody, I guess. If you're talking to a dude, he's very quiet, he's very subdued, you're doing work, and all of a sudden you're, you don't know what he does, but you're on the phone with him, and you're like, hey man, there's some dude with a pizza. Oh my God, it sounds like they're breaking in. He was like, all right, now what I want you to do is walk to the bookshelf and pull the book and push the button, get in, push the thing in, close it, don't make a sound. When he tells you not to make a sound, and he's very like systematic with how he has you do things, don't make a fucking sound, guy. <laughs> What are we fucking doing? He's breathing heavier than the loudest loudest fart ever. (laughs) Like, he's in there. He's breathing. He's got the light shining through Mm -hmm. the thing. Like, bro. And then he gets gets horked here. He gets kidnapped because he can't shut his goddamn mouth. Well, in fairness to him, he's a 16-year-old kid who was asked by McCall if he knows how to read. I'm now I'm just going to take a stab in the dark here and say Miles ain't the smartest tool in the shed, sharpest tool in the shed. However it's, that goes, I'm not smart either, but I'm smarter than fucking Miles. <laughs> because you're older. And you've you left your hometown and like visited places. No, my my whole thing here was just like I again, follow instruction. You don't have to be well read to listen. Hell yes. So after Miles gets taken here and McCall then heads to his hometown as it's being evacuated due to a hurricane and the the mercenaries go through the town here. They find McCall. DJ Khaled gets lured into the local shop where McCall harpoons him to the wall through his head. This is fantastic. Like... He slices the shit out of the next dude, like death by a thousand cuts. He harpoons DJ Khaled here. And then he blows up uh, Will Wahlberg with a flashbang, which, by the way, and I wasn't really, I was paying attention, but like, was that flour or sugar? What was that that he cut, what, that McCall cuts open? I honestly couldn't tell you. Okay. Whatever the white powdery substance in the bakery is, and it could have been either, I'm assuming it was flour, but I was like, yo, a flashbang can do that? Uh Uh-oh, we got a moron here, is that it? So after he gives all the the CIA operatives, like the giant L here, Mm. Dave, the fucking camper, by the way, okay? This is the son of a bitch that's on call of duty, just sitting in a goddamn tree somewhere, just sniping the shit out of people. And it's like, dude, come on and just like, like, let's join the game. Let's play the game. Yeah. Quit camping on fucking Nuketown, dickhead. That's, that's way too <laughs> small of a map. You got to be running around. But so he's the only one left here. He's at the top of the tower. He tells McCall that he has Miles held hostage and he's in the trunk of a car and he starts shooting at you know towards the trunk and at the trunk and when he goes to shoot into the trunk this is where mccall shoots the tire out and drops Mm -hmm. the the level of the car so he misses and then mccall scales the tower here in the matter of about five seconds props my guy yeah because well i'm pretty sure denzel's about 10 years older than me 
It would take me a week and a half to get to the top of that tower. Oh, yeah. Well, Robert McCall's 10 years older than you, but neither of us are Robert fucking McCall. Corey's Life Lessons. Hi, snipers. Uncle Corey here. The reason it's one shot, one kill is so you don't have to give away your position. It's great you found an elevated position, but also, you're in the wide fucking open. That first shot was identified by him, being Robert McCall, in yeah. about two seconds, and he knew exactly where to be. Absolutely. You fucking with that car was the only thing that delayed his time. Yep. The only thing. That was so stupid. That pissed me off, just laying there. Like, I understand if you're observing. Yeah. Cause that way you can call out to your guys where he's going, where they need to be, et cetera. Fine. It's like using the fucking chopper when you're on a police chase or whatever. That being said, don't give away your position by like shooting, especially when you're like, where are you, Robert? I'm going to shoot the car. Oh, I'm going to get the kid. Oh, I'm gonna Oh no, you're behind me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause he knew exactly where you were. You dipshit. What what did what did you think was going to happen? How did you think this was going to end? Yep. I would Stupid. rather have them set up this scene where he shoots at McCall but misses. Yes. Like McCall has to move really quickly cuz like I don't know, mm -hmm. a rat a rat comes like running by or some shit and he's like, "Oh," and he just misses him and that's how he finds out where he is. Yeah. That would have worked. This is where this is where you have the back and forth, but to just have it for no reason just for like the the cat and mouse of it all. Mhm. Mm yeah, I I'm, I'm right there with you with that. But after McCall scales the top of this thing, they fight. He grabs the the knife that uh Dave was using. He gouges Dave's eye out, which props. I I it's a brutal kill or it's a brutal, I don't know, uh injury, wound. But I don't know that I'd have the stones to do that to somebody. I mean, maybe given the right circumstance, but like, I'm assuming when your thumb goes in there, it gets squishy and warm real quick. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know killed, that I can handle that. I mean, they killed Melissa Leo. So going back to what we said kind of earlier, uh, this is gang gang, bro. <laughs> I'm going to make you feel this one. You like a, a fucking knife to your aorta? Mm -mm. You're going to feel it all the way. And then I'll let you out of your, I'll put you out of your misery. But until that moment, nah, yeah. I'm taking a part of your nose, piece of your ear. I'm going reservoir dogs on that bitch, pouring gasoline on the open wound. Like, I'm going to go fucking ham on you. Yeah. I, Luckily, just, I don't I'm have skipping. any friends, so everyone's safe. Uh, I'm skipping the eyeball thing, man. I can't, like, I got, I just the texture, the, the, the temperature. I'm, I'm not good with any of that. I'll do all the other stuff. I'll slice you around and I'll I'll do everything Corey just said. Just not like the the thumb in the orifice just doesn't. Ah. It's like your thumb slipped into the jelly jar. Uh, you just I lick it off and move on. <laughs> God. Unless it's sexual, I ain't doing it. Hell yes. They wrestle around here. He gouges his eye out. He grabs his knife. He stabs him, throws him off the tower, and he goes to save Miles. And he sees that Miles was actually shot in the leg. So he takes him to his old house, treats his wounds, stops the bleeding. This is where Miles sees, you know, pictures of McCall when he was a soldier. And we cut to back home where Miles is on the bus with a girl from this uh, from the school that he goes to. She sees him drawing. They're talking. And then the old dude from earlier in the movie gets reunited with his sister, Magda, after McCall pulls a few strings for that. And the movie ends basically just as McCall is standing outside his old house, looking out into the ocean. Done and done. Yeah, he's, he's equalized the world for another turn or two. Dude, he equalized the fuck out of everybody. Once again. And once again, <laughs> I'm here for it all, man. The acting's good. It's shot really well. All the fight slash kill scenes are super unique and just kind of cool. 
And it's one of those like, God, if I had that skill, I would be so much calmer of a person. This is what I love about McCall. Normally, and this is just kind of a PSA for everybody, when you run into somebody who's this goddamn calm and their pulse like is just it's just here. It never increases no matter what the situation. Be aware of wherever that person is at all times. That's a scary individual. People like yeah. me who fly off the handle and have anger issues, we're not scary. We're just loud. We can't do shit. It's true. He can. These guys, the quiet ones, I'm telling you, man, that's the shit. I wish I had just a little bit of that, but I have no skill. And I know I can't like turn somebody's gun around like, hey, hey. It's in your face now. I know I can't do any of that shit, so I'm just loud. Fair enough. I can get a mean game of patty cake going. That's I'll how fast some, my hands can move. I'll fuck some people up in patty cake. But I couldn't double dutch if you paid me. I'd fall on my <laughs> face so fast. I'm like it's just. I'm a no, big dude, picture kind of guy. I'm a big picture this, kind of guy. This this movie's the shit. I love this movie. I love all three yeah, of these movies. Spoiler alert, the next movie we're doing is Equalizer 3, and I love that one too. Yeah, these are all, like I said before in the first one, uh, and maybe even in Training Day, you put Antoine Fuqua and Denzel together, and I will probably watch it. It really doesn't take much of even yeah. a story to be behind it. Those two just work so well together. It's like Scorsese and De Niro. Yeah. It, it's uh, I'm I'm right there with you, and it doesn't matter who co-stars in the movie, mm -hmm. right? You got Ashton Sanders here as Miles in this one. He's the side project. You had the chubby security guard from the Home Depot in the first one as like his side projects, and it literally does not matter who's standing next to him. He's just awesome. Antoine Fuqua is fucking incredible. The two of them mm -hmm. working together. All the people that that came in to write the script, like they're just they're all the whole everything that makes this whole thing work and run is awesome. Mm -hmm. But that's all I got, man. Do you got anything else for this one? Nope. I like it. <laughs> all right, cool. We get a thumbs up from Corey. Well, with that said, for Corey. I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 2018's The Equalizer 2.